clap if you've had sex with a British guy. <gasps> Cassandra, again? You little minx, was it my husband? It's super, here's the thing, don't do it, Cassandra, don't do it. Because I love my husband, but it's really, an, he, every time we have sex, he does this annoying thing. He's like, the British are coming, the British are coming. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, I saw them getting closer. <laughs> I think I'm becoming my parents as I get older. I have no transition, so don't wait for them. They're not coming. Um, I think I'm becoming my parents as I get older. Anybody else? Yeah? You're becoming my parents too? <laughs> that would be weird. I'm, I, I'm becoming my parents. Here's what's bothering me. I'm becoming my dad. <laughs> He's a 75-year-old Italian man shaped like a tomato. <laughs> and here's how I know I'm becoming him, because I have all his old Italian man problems. I have high cholesterol, I have acid reflux, sleep apnea, and more recently, my mother started getting on my nerves. <laughs> and my husband's turning into his dad, so now we're just, he's like his old English guy, and I'm this old Italian man, and we're just a really mismatched gay couple. It's like, it's not working. My parents just moved to Florida a year ago. Do we have any Floridians in the crowd? Oh, we do? Oh. I, what's good? My, my parents moved there a year ago. It's like they aged in dog years. It's been like that. They used to play tennis and, and go to museums. I called my mother the other day. She's like, I can't talk. We're on our way to the grocery store to weigh ourselves. <laughs> what? What? It's so weird. I'm sorry. I, I'm just going to say it. I hate Florida. I really do. I hate Florida. I do. And by the way, Florida, gay, okay? Gay, gay. I can say it all day. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not even gay, and I got applause for that. That's so cool. Um, no, it's just, I, here's the thing about Florida. I hate it, but I'm going to go on vacation there later this year because <laughs> this is why. Because Florida's like that ex-boyfriend that you hate, but you keep going back to, you know? And why do we do it? Because it's convenient, it's hot, <laughs> and, you know, it's the only thing you can afford. So that's why I'm doing it. My parents started making terrible decisions, too, since they moved down there. Like, they go to the beach in August, and they don't wear any sunscreen because they're Italian. I'm like, what? I said, Mom, you have to wear sunblock. She goes, don't be ridiculous, Becky. A little color makes me feel healthy. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing crazy things. They're drinking, they're smoking, they're popping pills. My, they're falling down. My dad is cutting his own hair in the basement. I was like, well, and then I realized it's okay. It's okay, God does this on purpose. God makes parents increasingly more annoying so we don't miss them as much when they're gone. <laughs> That's dark, I know, that was dark. But I have darker, you wanna hear it? <laughs> I love you guys, you're awesome. This, I don't have to write this, this is, my mother called me the other day and she goes, listen, um, daddy, I just want you to know, like if things get really bad, Daddy and I have a murder-suicide pact. <laughs> I was like, well, uh, okay, I hope you're in charge because Dad never finishes anything. <laughs> the man has never finished a project. I go, remember when he painted half the door? <laughs> if my dad's in charge of a murder-suicide pact, he's gonna live, be living with me in my basement as a fugitive. <laughs> <laughs> I know you feel me, don't you feel me? I, I shouldn't make fun of them for aging because I'm aging too. I'm, it's, I'm at the age where I still look okay, but I feel like shit. Like I feel, I feel terrible all the time. I, I wake up exhausted. Does anyone else wake up tired? <laughs> right? You wake up to plan your nap. Like, what? <laughs> like I gotta put that in a schedule. What? This morning, I woke up, I was so tired, I couldn't open the face ID on my phone. 
You know the face? Do you have the? I, so you take it in the morning and you look at it and it opened. It didn't open. I was like, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what was wrong. I was like, oh my God, what's wrong with my face? So I go in the bathroom, I look in the mirror, and Mickey Rourke is staring back at me. Not the 80s Mickey Rourke either, like the wrestler Mickey Rourke. It's different. We, we do things for different reasons as we get older. Like, I used to work out to look hot, you know? And now I work out just to stay alive. Like, just to lower the LDL. I, don't, I used to want to look hot. Now I don't care. Now I just don't want to look gross. Like, I, you know, I get it. I'm never going to be a supermodel. I just don't want to have a goatee and skin tags. You know what I mean? <laughs> they just pop up, don't they? <laughs> just wake up in the morning and you're like, what the? That wasn't here last night. Um, even my feet are old, you know? Like, I go to DSW now. I don't know if you have that up here. Those shoes, right? And I shop in the practical shoe aisle now. You know the one I'm talking about? The one where nurses and Applebee's waiters get their shoes? I'm like, these clogs are special. <laughs> I feel like I just got off the shift, the midnight shift at St. Barnabas. I'm like, what happened to me? Everything I used to think was fun now just makes me tired. You know, they're like, hey, uh, Cindy's party's this weekend. I'm like, eh, eh. That new movie's coming out on Friday. I'm like, eh, eh. Hey, honey, the kids aren't home. I'm like, eh, nah, nah, nah. Just nah, you know? I tried jogging to stay fit. This is, I feel like this is embarrassing to jog around my neighborhood because I look like I'm in pain when I jog. I do. I do. I look like I'm on the 26th mile of a marathon. But I just left my house. And I already need to pee. Yesterday I must have looked really bad because someone pulled over and asked me if I wanted a ride. And I got in. I did. And it was an ambulance. I go to the doctor a lot now because I'm 50. It's like my new hobby, you know? I went, I hate going to this one office. I go, you fill out the 32-page form on the clipboard, and then you go in with the doctor and he asks you the same questions, right? Do we have doctors here? No, let's talk about them. Why do they do that? The doctor was like, uh, have you had any surgeries? I go, uh, yeah, with you, two weeks ago. <laughs> Did you not read chapter five of the autobiography I wrote in your lobby? I was like, what? And then I was leaving and he goes like this. He goes, okay, well, you're all set. Great to see you, Joyce. <laughs> Fuck is Joyce? I'm not Joyce. I, I was just standing totally naked in front of this guy and he called me the wrong name. Which by the way, not the first time, but <laughs> never a doctor. Never. My friend was like, did you lose confidence in him as a doctor, as a surgeon? And I was like, no, because the surgery was over. Would have been a different story if he called me Joyce as the anesthesia was kicking in, you know? <laughs> Just like, lie back and relax, Joyce. We'll have that leg amputated in no time. <laughs> but here's how you know how old you are. I'm going to leave you with this. By how many ologists you have. <laughs> right? Right? Like in my 20s, I had a dermatologist, that's it. Now, now that I'm 50, I have a, a cardiologist, a pulmonologist, a gastroenterologist, and of course, for my vagina, an archeologist. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Let me ask Linda this. Did Marsha just go to the bathroom? She did. She just went to the bathroom. Well, I'm going to make her run. Hey, Marsha. <laughs> oh, my God. You're going to love this comic. I'm telling you. I love her. Here's the great thing about tonight is that um, everybody on the show, not only the funniest people I know, but some of the loveliest people I know, and I was so excited to come just so I could visit with them. So uh, let's practice sending love to the stage before I bring her up. Um, 
You're gonna love her so much. She is a professional writer by day and a professional comedian by night. She performs all over New York City. Please give it up for the fabulous Marsha Blaustein! <laughs> Keep clapping! Keep clapping! Oh my God! Alta Cocker, indeed, you can't hold it in. <laughs> well, welcome everybody. My name is Marsha, and I am perpetually uncomfortable and dissatisfied. <laughs> you know something? It's like two days till summer, right? I am dreading it. I absolutely dread it. You know, it's, 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 I hate the heat. If you think it's bad in New York, you should come to New Jersey where I live. <laughs> New Jersey in summer is 8,752 square miles of extended fart. <laughs> and, and you know, there's so much to do. What a playground. <laughs> Jump in your convertible, cruise up the, uh, the New Jersey turnpike, Stop in Secaucus for a lovely outdoor lunch. <laughs> Better yet, get on the Peter Pan tour bus for a weekend in Atlantic City. As if, as if, as if calling it the, uh, the Peter Pan could make it stink any less. It's fantastic. You know, summer is the time of the year when, uh, unfortunately, I have the bandwidth to visit my parents in uh, Florida. Here we go again. You know, I, I mean, have any of you been to Florida in the summer recently? Oh my God, it is so friggin' hot that iguanas are hanging themselves. Florida has the highest rate of amphibian suicide in the nation. And I know for a fact, there's a special edition of the Ancestry DNA kit for certain parts of Florida called Three and Me. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> have, you been, have you been to the restaurants? Oh my God, I gotta tell you something. It's not, and I, I'm not referring to the, the uh, 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 culinary masterpieces in South Beach or Miami. I'm talking about the food of the people. The old people. <laughs> Broward County. My parents, uh, we used to go to a place called the Flaming Pit. <laughs> Some of you are, yeah, you know, you remember that place. On Route A1A, remember? Let me tell you something. That place was famous for its pre-chewed specials. You, you could leave your teeth at home. It had the slowest salad bar in the entire, it was slower than an ice age. The line got jammed up because every other person was, was inspecting the goulash or smelling the salad dressing to see if it was still fresh. <laughs> then there was um, a Denny's in Plantation that my parents loved. Denny's in, oh my God. That, that place, I gotta say though, that place did a great public service because people who were considering, were thinking about ending their lives could choose between a trip, a costly trip to the Kevorkian Clinic or the $1.99 Grand Slam. <laughs> Fantastic food, you know? I mean, geez, my parents' development is like t the definition of terminal. They live um, in Sunrise, Florida, in the development there. I call it sunset, it's much at more apropos. Yeah. And, I, you know, that place, let me just put it this way, people there who, who live there are so old and dried out, they call it Jurassic Park. <laughs> I, I, I don't have to go to the Natural History Museum to see a desiccated, semi-erect skeleton. All I have to do is look at my uncle. <laughs> or better yet, go to the pool. <laughs> you wanna see a diorama? <laughs> it's, just, 
beyond belief. Anyway, you know, all I do when I visit my parents is to sit in their condo and I listen to them fight, 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 fight. I said, Ma, what's kept you and Pop together for 65 years? She says, hatred and loathing in that order. <laughs> I think hate, hate will keep us together should be their theme. Yeah. Hate will keep us, anyway. Yeah, you know, and, and the thing is that she's been angry with him, I think, for as long as I, I can remember. Uh, in fact, when I was a kid, she stole a bottle of my Flintstone vitamins and she bit the heads off all the Freds. <laughs> that is hostility. Jeez. You know something? I mean, she's a bitter woman. She's a pessimistic woman. She's, it's, but you know, she's a realist. The woman's a realist. When I was a kid, she used to read me bedtime stories like um, The Little Engine with Pernicious Anemia. I think I can, I think I can. I'm much too tired, I'm much too tired, I'm much. <laughs> then there was that perennial favorite, Barry the Buffalo has syphilis. <laughs> Can't end well, no. As a result, you know, I'm a very dark adult. I'm pessimist, I'm dark, you know. I, I never think that anything is gonna, is gonna turn out right. One night, well, actually, I keep looking for a massage parlor that will give me an unhappy ending. You know, that's <laughs> not that one. But, you know, one night I'm sitting in my, in my office and I'm, I'm working late. A woman comes standing in the doorway. She points a finger at me and says, you're a fake, you're a phony, and you have no inherent talent. I said, Ma, don't make me call security again. <laughs> Get her out of here. Ugh, you know, you know, to top it all off, you know, I haven't had it easy. None of us have, but I have not had it easy. And uh, I, as, you know, I'm gay, okay? I'm gonna tell you all I'm gay. And uh, that used to get a clap, by the way. Now it's a big nothing. Thank you. I mean, really. Are you really surprised? If you can see my shoes, I mean, you can't even, they're very nice. But, you know, I got this outfit at the non-committal gender department at The Gap. <laughs> An aborigine could look at me and go, gay. I mean, really, it says, you know. And, you know, my mother, you know, bring her up again. She, uh, she was the last to know. How do you not figure this out? I guess she finally asked herself, what's a 47-year-old woman doing with a roommate named Marlene? Oy, oy, oy. You know, right now, you know, she has Alzheimer's dementia. <clears throat> That's a terrible illness, you know? But in observing her, I've noticed that the part of the brain that's the most resistant to it is the part that has the ability to insult you. <laughs> so now when she sees me, she says, I don't know who you are, but your hair looks terrible. <laughs> Thank you, Ma, thanks. thanks. Oh God, why are we here tonight? We're here for revival. You know, I gotta say, getting older sucks. It really sucks. You know, you think I like being a, a, an aging baby boomer? Do you think I like hearing the sound of my bladder hurtling towards the Earth's core? <laughs> it takes three tiny women at the nail spa to pluck out my facial hair. They have to stand on me. <laughs> it's like a scene from The Deer Hunter. Just terrible, you know? And the thing is, you know, you hit 60. Oy vey. You know, that's, the, that's really the decade when the bulging, wrinkling, and bagging of the last 20 years comes to fruition. <laughs> when just one late night could put you in intensive care. <laughs> it's, uh, it's horrible. When, you know, you start doing weird things because actually your behavior changes and it becomes your priorities change because cosmically speaking, you have the equivalent of 15 minutes to live, right? Oh, that got you, right? I'm having to just <laughs> depress the entire place. You start watching movies, I never, I mean, you can't get through a film without pointing out everyone who's dead. <laughs> He's dead, she's dead, they're dead, that stadium is dead. You know, or, you know, they must be dead by now, <laughs> right? No one could possibly be alive that long. 
So that's, that's something. And you know, the other thing is, it's very depressing when you finally realize that you have more in common with people with walk-in tubs and, and toilet lifts than you do with the people you hit on. Absolutely horrible. The other thing that, that you really have to admit is that, you know, all of the stars that we knew, the baby boomer heroes, the musicians, the artists, the celebrities, they're all either dead, dying, or they look horrible, right? Like, I mean, some of them look good, but for example, Mick Jagger is, right? I always go to him. He's, he's what, the guy is what, 78 or 79 years old now? He's still out there. But you know, every time he sings Start Me Up, I get scared. I, I think his pacemaker stopped. The leather, the groupie, the medic alert bracelets. Some people look really good. You know, Paul McCartney, I mean, he just played a concert. He's 80 today. Unbelievable. I hope I look that good when I... So that's good, you know. Um, and even though meatloaf may be dead, <laughs> lamb chop looks fantastic. <laughs> Do you remember lamb chop? Uh, I know a, a lot of you remember lamb chop on the Sherry Lewis show. I'll tell you something, she must have had a cloth tuck because <laughs> they pulled back the fabric. She looks, she looks fantastic. She's really kicking. So is Bob Barker. Remember Bob Barker? Now, I think he had a few bags done, but it's, it's not helping because the parts of Stonehenge are not as old as him. <laughs> oh my God, I gotta, I gotta tell you, getting older is so difficult. You know, you don't run, when you're younger, you run in packs. You run with your friends, right? When you're older, you spend a lot more time alone because none of your friends can run anymore. <laughs> you're stuck at home. The worst thing you can do is to look at Facebook. Psychologically, I mean, everybody is having a perfectly wonderful time, or at least it looks that way, right? You're sitting home like a yutz. <laughs> and so, you know, in, in, in looking at Facebook, I realized that, you know, I'm observing some things. One is, gay men are always on vacation. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Always on vacation. These guys go everywhere and anywhere they can be naked. Crete, Mykonos, south of France, the shop right on Fire Island. <laughs> Whereas a lesbian's idea of a fun time is to spend a week on a freighter hauling ropes, <laughs> dressed like the Gordon's fisherman. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. You know, getting older, another observation is um, I wouldn't wish dating at my age on a dog. Gay or straight. It's like American Horror Story. <laughs> I was single for a very long time, but I was very fortunate because I met a wonderful woman and uh, I'm really happy now and you know, I'm not single, thank God. However, being single is very difficult when you're, when you're in your 60s. I had some dates that, well, I, I'll tell you this. I had some dates that the only thing that would have been worse is if I was on fire the entire time. I, um, this one woman shows up, I swear to you, they were like lightning bolt eyebrows. How do you get them like that? You, you know what they look like? They look like that jagged thing on Herman Munster's forehead. How do you do that? I mean, she was really something else. I mean, she, she basically, I never saw her leave the restaurant. I just saw a bat fly off. I had another date. This woman shows up with the ashes of her dead partner in a thermos. I mean, she must have thought the restaurant was BYOC, bring your own cremains. How would you like to spend an evening with a cup of girlfriend? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You have been a fantastic audience. Love you. Let's hear from Marsha Blaustein.
I'm going to keep the show going. I'm going to keep the show going with your next comic. Uh, I know you're going to love him. He uh, is working all the time. He has uh, a number one comedy album on iTunes called Thug Thug Jew. Ex I didn't make it up. It's hilarious. Even the title is hilarious. Um, and he also last year was in Netflix's Red Notice with The Rock. Um, and he's going to be in the upcoming Blank Slate on NBC. Give it up for Ethan Hershenfeld. <laughs> Ethan, Ethan. Keep it going, keep it going. It's a long walk. Oh my God, it's a long walk. Thank you. Wow, that's a long walk. Um, I have a tuxedo jacket with me, which I decided to put on instead of wearing a, a hoodie. Uh, be, I have it with me because I'm, I'm going to a wedding tomorrow. So that's exciting, a friend's wedding. But I actually don't like going to weddings. Uh, because, you know, you go there, you celebrate it, and then, you know, you can just undo it. It can be undone. I don't like going to celebrate things that can be undone. That's why, you know, I really prefer going to a funeral. <laughs> or a bar mitzvah, or a circumcision. So, don't invite me to any weddings, please. I mean, I mean congratulations, but don't invite me. I'll, I'll send a gift. Yeah. So, um, the summer is, the summer is kind of stressful for me because um, I get upset every time I see one of those headlines in the newspaper about a shark, <laughs> a shark attack, yeah. Because there's always a photo of the shark. But it's not the shark. It's just a shark who is swimming around minding his own business. And then there's his photo under a headline about someone getting killed by a shark. I feel bad for the shark. All right, well, that's my shark sympathy bit. <laughs> Apparently, this is an anti-shark audience. So, no more shark. By the way, why would she buy a stairway to heaven? That's clearly an item you should rent. Because <laughs> you're going to use it once, then it's just going to end up in the garage. Uh, you're going to be hanging clothes on it. It's not going to get a lot of use. Rent it. That's, that's my point. Well, so before we get into the jokes, um, <laughs> um, I just wanted to point something out that I noticed during uh, the last two years. I didn't know this before, but I'm going to share this bit of advice. This is very important. I think you'll find it useful and enjoyable. When you have to cancel plans, do not apologize. Because when you cancel, the other person is thrilled. <laughs> you, yeah, you just gave them like a, it's like when you were a kid and you got a snow day. They are celebrating. It's, there's nothing better than getting canceled on. So that's my advice. Just stop, stop apologizing when you cancel. Just cancel with abandon. I, I don't do a lot of like topical news, current events humor, but there's, there's one thing I did want to explain, which is that I think part of the thing that people are finding upsetting about everything that's going on in Ukraine is that they just don't know whether it's Ukraine or the Ukraine. You listen to the news and it's Ukraine, today in Ukraine, today in Ukraine, and then you turn the channel, it's like the Ukraine, the Ukraine, the Ukraine. I didn't know which one it was, so I asked a friend who's from there, and she said, no, 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 it's not the Ukraine, it's Ukraine. In fact, the Ukraine is insulting. Yeah, the the is, is an insult. Now, I grew up in the Bronx. <laughs> And if you leave out the the, that's an insult. <laughs> Nobody says, like, I come visit you in Bronx. <laughs> well, I guess some people say that, I come visit you in Bronx. They're from Ukraine. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, duh, thank you. Appreciate it, thank you. 
The other thing in the news that uh, I'll, I'll share with you that's very upsetting is, uh, you know, this whole replacement theory discussion. Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, it's just, it's a disaster. I don't know if you remember, but back in 2017, those Nazis in Charlottesville chanting, Jews will not replace us, Jews will not replace us. I heard that and I was like, wow, that sounds like a chant I would have heard from all of the appliances in my parents' kitchen. Especially that toaster oven. I think we got it in 72 and made it past the millennium. I've been telling that joke and, and now I, I was home the other day and I realized my refrigerator is 30 years old. So, it's genetic. Jews will not replace us. I went to a, uh, I went to like a, religious school as a kid, um, like an orthodox kind of school, even though we were atheist at home. <laughs> which was very upsetting and confusing, so I ended up getting into a lot of fights. Or as I called them, pogroms. <laughs> yeah, the rabbi, he took me aside, he said, it seems like you don't like the Jews. I said, no, no, I just don't like these Jews. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm actually, I'm an atheist. Um, yeah. My girlfriend's also an atheist, but she says she wants to convert to Judaism so that we can both deny the existence of the same God. <laughs> I've been dabbling in, in Buddhism. I'm very interested in it. Um, and a friend of mine who's, uh, who I've listened to a lot of his talks, he said, you know what, I'm coming to New York to give a talk on the Bardo, and I'd love to stay with you. And I said, absolutely, that would be great. What's the bardo? He said, oh, the bardo is the state you dwell in when your life is over before you're completely dead. I said, oh, you mean Florida. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a vegan. Uh, my girlfriend's also vegan, but we have a cheat day on Wednesdays. We sleep around. People ask me why I'm vegan. It's really, uh, it's, it's just because I, I feel bad for, for the animals, especially the side dishes. <laughs> side of bacon. He gave his life. He's not even a main course. <laughs> you got to be careful as a vegan. Like in an Asian restaurant, I asked them, is this vegan? They said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they bring it and they said, oh, there's some fish sauce. I said, what? They said, yeah, yeah, in, in, in some Asian cuisines. Fish is considered a spice. I said, oh, you know who doesn't consider fish a spice? Fish. <laughs> Again, the pro shark audience. Okay, I'll... Uh... <laughs> no more fish jokes. I... I keep getting mistaken for an Uber driver. <laughs> Yeah. Whenever I pull up to a red light, are you my Uber? No, I'm not. I'm not your Uber. I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> Next person who asks, I'm just telling them to hop in. <laughs> I get it. It's my whole Afghani, Albani, Algeri, Armeni, Azerbaijani. I'm going alphabetically, so it takes a while. It ends with Yemeni and Zagrebi. So. People see me, they say, yeah, he looks like a desert smuggler, so he should just shuttle me to the Whole Foods. But I, I can't. I can't drive a cab, because I'm Jewish, and if you go home and you tell your parents, your Jewish parents, that you drive a cab, uh, they don't even have time to kill themselves. It's just poof, they vaporize into a mist of shame and settle on the floor into twin puddles of regret. Yeah, like, I'm gonna do business with a company called Uber. Come on, Uber! It's one of the Nazis' favorite words. Yeah, Uber means over or superior, and they called themselves Ubermensch, Superman. And they called our people Untermensch, Underman. Yeah, Overman and Underman. <laughs> Perfect match on Grinder. <laughs> I 
Best ethnicity for a cabbie, Russian. Some guy who's resigned to how horrible everything always is. <laughs> Where to? You want me to take Govanis Expressway? I take Govanis Expressway. You want me to take Jackie Robinson Parkway? I take Jackie Robinson Parkway. You want me to hike barefoot in blizzard with you, your luggage, and your family on my back? Hop on. You want me to smile? Worst ethnicity for cabbie, my people, the Jews. Yeah. You can tell, because you know, there's Uber, there's Lyft, there's no Jewish taxi app. Schlep. <laughs> yeah, what would that be anyway? Uh, yeah, the driver would complain the entire time. <sighs> oy, this traffic, oy, this weather, oy, this job, I should have gone to law school. <sighs> Would you mind closing the window? There's a little bit of a draft. I had a thing in my neck. It went into my throat. If you don't close the window, it's going into my spine. Would you just close the window? <sighs> <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for riding with Schlepp. If your driver stops fetching, the ride is on us. <laughs> I imagine Schlepp would have its own GPS system. It, it wouldn't use Waze. It would use Oyvays. Which, which wouldn't give directions. It would just point out all of your mistakes. You should have turned back there. Back there, you probably should have turned. I'm just trying to help. You're the driver. You drive. I'll be quiet. But you should have turned. I'll be quiet. You drive. I'll be quiet. And... Uh, with this traffic, you probably should have left a little earlier. I'm just saying, I'm trying to help. You, you drive, I'll be quiet. You drive, I'll be quiet. But you should have left earlier. It's rush hour. I, I understand why my people can get uptight while traveling. I've read the Bible. <laughs> we never went anywhere voluntarily. And we never got an honest answer about how long it was going to take. Garden of Eden, get out, go to Canaan. All right, now go to Egypt. Okay, now go back to Canaan. Back to Canaan, we just got paid. How, how long is this going to take? Shouldn't take too long. <laughs> now go to Babylon. Babylon, how? You're going to walk, how? Through Syria. Hold on, you want me to walk through Syria to Iraq? How long is this going to take? Shouldn't take too long. <laughs> we didn't need a New Testament. We needed a new map. So I'm, I'm an actor, as Becky mentioned. I'm always getting cast as the ethnic thug. I was on that CBS show, Unforgettable, that nobody remembers. Okay. Played, played an Albanian, an Albanian mobster, yeah. Um, I was on that ABC show, Forever. I got canceled after one season. Eastern European mobster. I got tired of, of, of uh, playing this kind of role. I said to my agent, can you get me an audition for something a little bit more substantial? Something where I can really, you know, strut my stuff. Here are the next six auditions she got me after I gave her that pep talk. Thug, thug, Jew, thug, thug, Jew. <laughs> thug, thug, Jew, that's, uh, that's uh, duck, duck, goose for the ethnic actor. <laughs> My first movie role back in the 90s, I played Alejandro, the Colombian cocaine kingpin, in a movie called The Deviants, yeah. I still, I still remember my lines. My line. My word. Gringo. The whole thing, there it was. Yeah. <laughs> You're very generous, thank you. Yeah. Or maybe you've seen it uh, on VHS, the only way that it's available. 
I got to play Pinky Rabinowitz, a Jewish mobster on the show Boardwalk Empire. Oh. And what I learned on that show is that for a mobster, Sicilian is a much more intimidating accent than Yiddish. Yeah. I'll show you. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to put an end to this. And I'm gonna have to put an end to you. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to put an end to this. I gotta put an end to you. I gotta put an end to him. Maybe to her. Who knows to whom I'll have to put an end. If it was up to me, I wouldn't put an end. Why are you gonna go putting an end? Why would I wouldn't put an end? But I have a job. It's a, I have a boss. He says, put an end. I put an end. I gotta put food on the table. So I put an end. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh, not, not an intimidating language, Yiddish. It, it is a sexy, it is a sexy language, which is why they call Yiddish the language of love, of course. Yeah. No, that's French, but I never found French sexy. But that probably has a lot to do with my middle school French teacher, Madame Lefkowitz. Yeah. Bonjour class. Je m'appelle Jessica. Je viens de Rancancama. Le expressway de Long Island exit 60. Écoutez et répétez. Not, never, never found that language sexy. People think Italian is really sexy. I lived in Italy for a while and worked there and um, I don't know, I, I, a woman came up to, to me at a party once and she said, um, È vero che voi ebrei fate l'amore con noi cattolici solo per umiliarci? <laughs> Which just, I mean, it sounds, it sounded amazing. Here, here's what she said, she said, Is it true that you Jews by the way, no, no question that begins with, is it true, has ever ended well for the Jews. <laughs> so she, she actually asked me, is it true that you Jews make love to us Catholics just to humiliate us? <laughs> I, I said, no, not just. For me, the sexiest language is German. Yeah, yeah. my girlfriend's German, and uh, the first time we were making love, uh, she, she said this to me. She said, ach, yeah. <laughs> ach, yeah, it just means, oh, yeah, but I mean, ach, something about that, ach, it just, I loved it. I really wanted to answer her in German. I didn't know any German. I mean, I knew a little. The only German I knew I'd learned from Schindler's List. Juden raus, Jews out. <laughs> which would not have been appropriate at that moment. So I just got quieter and quieter. And she was getting louder and louder, basically yelling at me in German. And I'm just getting quieter, and, which is historically accurate. <laughs> I was telling you about the glory of, uh, of the acting gigs. I'll share another, another one with you. I had an audition for the show Blacklist. Yeah, for the role of Arab terrorist. That was his name. Yeah. My, line, my line was, um, I want to help dot, 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 but without approval, dot, dot, dot. More dots than words, actually. Yeah. And the line was in Arabic. I don't speak Arabic, but I had a friend teach me how to say it. And then I was practicing the line, just drilling it over and over and over again on the way to the audition, on the subway at rush hour. <laughs> the car cleared out. I, I didn't get the part, but 
Now I use that line whenever I need a seat. I'll tell you about one more audition. During the pandemic, I had an audition for the, for the show Hunters, which is about these Nazi hunters. Uh, and my scene was gonna be with Al Pacino. I was up for the role of a rabbi who, my, a one-on-one -on -one scene with Al Pacino. I was just, yeah, it was so exciting. Didn't book it, was very disappointed. And then a few weeks later, my agent says, they wanna, they wanna see you again. And I said, oh really, great, what, what's the role? She said, Nazi guard. <laughs> so I, I'm thinking, how bad did my rabbi audition have to go <laughs> for them to think, oh, I know what this guy would be perfect for. <laughs> Didn't land it. All right, I, uh, I'm gonna um, get a little political here at the close. Uh, I think you'll, you'll bear with me. Um, so I would personally be very excited if Bernie would run for office again. I know he's getting up there. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. He's getting up there. Um, I actually, you know, I did the math. If he, you know, uh, election 2022, uh, inauguration 2022, I did the math. He'll be 176, <laughs> which I feel like it would be nice to have a president who really understands American history because he lived through the whole thing. <laughs> but I have an idea that I think would actually get him over the finish line this time if he would just follow my advice. He could be in the White House. Yeah. He just needs to release a Christmas album. <laughs> a very Bernie Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Track one. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. If he had access, the healthcare paid for by the federal government, he could have had that looked at when it was only mildly shiny. <laughs> Nip that shiny nose in the bud. <laughs> Track two. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Right down Santa Claus Lane. Santa Claus Lane, you know what that is? That's infrastructure paid for by the federal government. No federal government, no Santa Claus Lane. You know what you get for Christmas? Bupkis. <laughs> track three, don't worry, there's only 18 tracks. <laughs> track three, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Dream on. With global warming and environmental degradation, it's gonna be a wintry mix at best. <laughs> Start dreaming of a slushy Christmas. <laughs> Very Bernie Christmas. Streaming everywhere. And if you're streaming everywhere, I have a fantastic urologist. <laughs> and if we had single payer, you could afford to see him. All right, thank you very much, guys. You've been a wonderful audience. Let's hear it from Becky Viduccio. Becky. all the time. He's on the Greg Gutfield show. He also has over 9 million views on his dry bar comedy special. You should check it out. It's hilarious. Please give it up for the fantastic Joe DeVito, everybody. Joe! Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice round of applause.